the January 11, 2011 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? President Adair. Here. Ms. Andrews. Mr. Antelli. Here. Mr. Barker. Here. Mr. Baruth. Here. Mr. Beebe. Yeah. Mr. Cassetti. Here. Mr. Colby. Here. Mr. Danielli is excused. Mrs. Draw. Here. Mr. Echo. Here. Mr. Esposito. Here. Mr. Gamble. Here. Mr. Gamina. Here. Mr. Haney. Here. Mr. Hannah. Here. Mr. Hyder. Here. Mr. Holland. Here. Ms. Cayley. Mr. Lee. Here. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Mr. Monero. Here. Mr. McCann. Here. Mr. O'Brien. Dr. Quattro. Here. Mr. Rocco. Here. Mr. Tucciarello. Here. Mrs. Valerio. Here. Mr. Yolovich. Before we get started tonight, I would like everyone to welcome our newest legislator, Joshua Barak. Joshua, welcome to the chamber. I don't usually do this. Oh, Here's your thank I'm you. I'm pinning him. You got your first official pin. I did. All righty. Um, Please stay seated. At this time, I would like a moment of silence to remember the victims of the tragic incident that happened in Tucson this past weekend. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the Reverend Jennifer Green of the Hilton Methodist Church, who's been invited tonight by Legislator Richard Yolovich. I'd like to thank both President Adair and Richard Yolovich for inviting me to share in prayer with you this evening. Let us pray. Eternal God, we ask that you bless these men and women who have been called to serve you in such a remarkable way. Lord, this evening heavy on our hearts are all of the victims and their families of the shooting in Tucson. Lord, we lift up to you, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Ask your healing touch to be upon her and that you will be with doctors and nurses as they care for her and her family as they pray and wait for her. Lord, we lift up to you the family of Christina Green, Gabe Zimmerman, John Roll, Doran Stoddard, Dorothy Morris, and Phyllis Schneck, and all of those, Lord, who have been so affected by this shooting. And we lift up to you, Lord, all of those who serve and protect us, especially our county sheriffs here this evening, and ask your blessing upon them. Lord, we lift up to you our service men and women as they serve us here and abroad and represent our country so well. And Lord, may your discernment and your wisdom be upon these, your men and women, who have been chosen to serve the people of Monroe County. And we ask all of this in the name of the Holy One. Amen. Amen. Green. On behalf of the whole Monroe County Legislature, I'd like to give you a certificate. You did a great job. Thank you. Legislator Debbie Draw will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You've received the copy of the Journal of Day 13, December 14, 2010, 
Without exception, the journal stands approved as submitted. There's a hearing loop in place tonight to assist those who are hearing impaired. Anyone requesting assistance should require the clerk's office. If you have a cellular phone, pager, or other electronic device in your possession, we would request that you make it inaudible for the duration of the meeting. Thank you for your cooperation. Legislators, the referrals submitted to you for the legislature for the next committee cycle are, are all in your folders. Um, at this time, I would also like to introduce to us tonight, and it was introduced at the Rec and, uh, Rec and Ed Commission, but I would introduce this month's plant of the month. And I'm going to say this right, they are the, this is the Croton. Did I get that right? I did it. Okay. This is the Croton, and it is, a, we have it displayed proudly um, in our, um, in our, uh, our arbor, arborarium where you can go visit them, and you see they're a, a lovely plant, and they're native to uh, the Western Pacific Ocean Island. So enjoy them tonight, please. Okay. This evening we have one proclamation scheduled. Madam Clerk. Would Patricia Utero, director of the Rochester Public Library, please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair, legislator Mary A. Valerio. And this proclamation is also brought to you this evening by legislator Anthony Daniele. Thank you. Whereas for the past 100 years, the services offered by the Rochester Public Library have promoted the intellectual and civic well-being of patrons, benefiting all residents of Monroe County. And whereas the Rochester Public Library provides invaluable resources to our community, including the preservation of local history, as well as the promotion of literacy and entertainment through its many beneficial community programs. And whereas this year they will continue that fine tradition as the library is offering many programs that highlight their successful 100 years, including the 100 Years 100 Books Reading Project and programs featuring plans for the next 100 years. These programs have strengthened the community by creating vibrant learning hubs out of our public libraries. They have also enriched the citizens of Monroe County with important cultural offerings that allow us to appreciate our rich heritage. And whereas we celebrate the efforts of libraries and their staff, for the enormous benefits they produce for communities, communities across our nation. Monroe County is proud to be the home to such a cherished asset in our community, and we thank the Rochester Public Library for their dedication to serving our residents. Best of luck in the next 100 years. Now therefore we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Mary A. Valerio, Legislator District 3, and Anthony J. Daniele, Legislator District 10, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate the Rochester Public Library in honor of its 100th anniversary. Congratulations. First of all, I'd like to point out to all of the legislators here tonight that you have packets in front of you that uh, provide information about all the events that are happening throughout the year, uh, along with some mementos of our 100th anniversary celebration. The Rochester Public Library enters its 100th year busier than ever. I'd like to share some statistics with you that demonstrate how busy we've become. In 2010, the Rochester Public Library recorded 1.7 million visits to our libraries with more than 700,000 happening at the Central Library alone. RPL Libraries loan 1.3 million items out of its city buildings. That includes 10 branches and two, two buildings at the Central Library campus on South Avenue. RPL loaned an additional 611,000 items to library users who live outside the city. Two thirds of the items loaned during 2010 were books, resulting in a rough value of $6 million in materials provided to, kept to county users by the Rochester Public Library. Library service has adapted over the last century 
to the needs expressed by our users. You can now borrow everything from a book to a GPS unit to a digital ebook that you can read on your computer. As we enter our next 100 years, library services are again changing due to technological advancements, yet we continue to provide critical and open access to the users who need it most. Thank you very much for recognizing this milestone year in the life of the Rochester Public Library, and I urge you to join us in the events that are described in the program information given to you tonight. Thank you very much. We will now recess for the purpose of holding one public hearing before the legislature. I declare the public hearing on enacting a local law authorizing contract for the sale of, for the sale to the city of Rochester on one parcel of county owned park land to the Ontario Beach Park boat launch and for continued boat launch operations by the city of Rochester. There are no speakers registered <clears throat> for this hearing. There being none, I declare this public hearing closed. You have in your folders the approved minutes for the last cycle. There are no formal committee uh, reports scheduled for this evening. We'll now hold a public forum. We have three people registered to address the legislature. Madam Clerk. A deputy will assist you in approaching the lectern. P please use the center aisle and come forward when your name is called. Each speaker will have two minutes in which to address the full body. Please conclude when the timer sounds and exit through the back of the chambers. Thank you for your cooperation. Our first speaker is Supervisor Sandra Frankel. Please come forward. Good evening. First, let me wish you all a happy new year. I'm here this evening to address the issue of redistricting, which is something that is timely in the new year. And I want to um, say that while I had heard earlier that the legislature was not going to consider a change in the process that has been used in the past for redistricting, I understand that you will be considering the uh, amended approach, the modified approach that legislator Vincent Esposito is proposing along with the current proposal. The fact that you're going to do this, I think is worthy of commendation because it gives you, it gives the public an opportunity to compare and contrast the two approaches, and I think you will find when you do that, that the proposal for a modified uh, commission that is expanded will provide greater access for public participation in a more nonpartisan way that really will change the tenor of government and politics as we've seen it become more confrontational and less cooperative uh, over the years. Historically, redistricting has been a highly politicized process that has benefited partisan politics, but not necessarily the body politic. It's time for reform. We see reform in redistricting called for at the state level and across the country, with the majority of state legislators and the new governor having signed a pledge to work on reforming the redistricting process for the state. I expect no less from our county legislators. I know you're up to it, and, and I hope that you will make the changes proposed. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Chris Safudo. Please come forward. Happy New Year greetings and wishes from all the hardworking men and women of Monroe County and CSEA. 
I again come before you to share with you the work that goes on on a daily basis by CSEA members in this county. Monroe County, tonight we're going to talk about three offices in Monroe County. They're the Department of Motor Vehicle Offices. These are employees who make sure that everyone in the county has a legal driver's license and insurance on their cars. But of course, you guys all know that stuff. What you don't know is what they have to deal with every day. For you see, many times there are customers who are not always happy with what the DMV rep tells them. This information sometimes lead, leads to the employees being sworn at, yelled at, and yes, even spit on. You may remember there was a woman who went over the table after the rep over at the mobile site across the street at City Place. That's just one example. Many times employees are grabbed at through the window at the offices. These employees handle as many transactions as a bank teller without any bulletproof glass, panic buttons, or any barriers between them and the customers. They work in conditions that are far from ergonomically correct and that may hinder their health in the future and raise the cost of workers' comp insurance. These folks are dedicated employees of Monroe County, even working in conditions that could be harmful to themselves. They show up every day and will, are willing to serve your community. With that, I'm going to close with Monroe County Works because we do. Thank you. Our last speaker is Ovi Overmeyer. Please come forward. Hello everyone, my name is O.V. Overmeyer and I stand before you today to speak as a resident and a taxpayer of Monroe County in the city of Rochester. Um, I want to talk about two things. One is redistricting and the other is about the budget. Um, after thorough review, the no debate budget that was passed last month is far from ideal. Neither economic efficiency nor the people's welfare were motivating factors here. This budget was about who gets what. This budget hardly addresses our current fiscal problems and creates others for future generations. I think I read somewhere that the projections for next year are close to 45 million and the year after it's close to 60 million. Conversely, it's true that this budget will not raise property taxes, but I differ with the county executive's claim that it doesn't affect the quality of life of our citizens. It does and it will. This budget disproportionately affects poor and working poor by raising fees, eliminating services altogether, and obviously this was a budget that has special privilege protected class in mind. Just so we are clear, I understand that there will be hundreds of county workers that will lose their jobs this year. Uh, it's not as if those workloads are going to disappear either with the workers. In fact, in this economy, our, our residents need these public services now more than ever. And it only makes sense that if you reduce the size of county government, residents can expect longer lines at government workplaces, phone calls will not be answered, consumer out-of-pocket costs will go up, and the caseloads and work orders will become un unmanageable. The proposed staffing of the probation department is shameful, and the move to privatize Monroe Community Hospital is reprehensible. As supervision of people on the probation decreases, we can only come to one conclusion, this budget puts the community's safety at risk. And as usual, I suppose the county executive, the media, and the legislature will blame the workers when the crap finally hits the fan. And according to my calculations, some confidential management personnel and the county administration will be getting significant pay raises as well, some up to 15%. So let me get this straight. While countless Monroe County workers get laid off or terminated, the poor struggle to survive at the same time, a select group of political appointees get hefty pay raises. This just is plain offensive to most taxpayers. And what's so troubling about this budget process is that taxpayers probably have no idea how or why these decisions continue to happen with little or no opposition coming from a complicit majority. Where is the hard work and due diligence on behalf of your constituents? For the last several years, there has been no room for democracy or debate in these chambers to consider other than one point of view. You don't debate anything for the common good. 
you just trade partisan insults and object to each other over rules of order, and it's beyond comprehension. I was going to talk about redistricting, but obviously I've taken up a lot of your time, but you can count on seeing me next month. Thanks. This concludes the public forum. <clears throat> At this time, we'll recess the January 11, 2011 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature to convene the Pure Waters Administration Board for the Rochester Pure Waters District. The clerk will please note the attendance and read the first item on the agenda. PWAB 1, referral 10-390. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. This is a motion to be adopted. All in favor? I'm sorry. Pardon me? I'm sorry, Yolovich. I'm sorry. I had to get used to that tonight. Okay. <laughs> This is a motion to adopt. All in favor? Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. PWAB item 2, referral 10-392. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Yolovich. This is a motion to adopt. All in favor? Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. We are all done. We are all now recess the Rochester Pure Waters District and adjourn the Pure Waters Administration Board. The January 2011 to, uh, meeting of the legislature will now reconvene. We will now proceed with the considerations of local law. Will the clerk please read the first item on the agenda? Mr. President, without objection, I'd like to move the balance or the uh, entirety of the agenda with the exceptions of items 13, item 15, item 20, and item 28. Thank you. Okay, is there any discussion or objections to that? At 13, 15, 20, and 28. Everyone all set on that? Uh -huh. Okay. We'll now move to item number 13 then. Item number. Oh, I'm sorry, we got to vote on that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Got ahead of myself. That's right, me too. Okay, it's all right, Cheryl. <laughs> it's the new year. be a lot more okay so we're all clear on that all right is there any discussion or any objections say if there's not all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye opposed okay it carries now we'll go to item number 13 item number 13 referral 10-373 moved by legislator Yolovich second by legislator Holland is there any discussion at this time yes legislator Eckel thank you mr. president uh, I'd like to rise right now to ask a couple of questions about our official newspapers. We come across this every year. Uh, through you, Mr. President, to the administration, um, may I ask, uh, we have two papers we're naming as the official papers, the uh, RBJ and the Daily Record. Could I ask what the uh, official readership of the RBJ is? Uh, through you, Mr. President, the official uh, circulation is 10,000. 10,000. And through you, Mr. President, could we have the official circulation of the daily record? Uh, through you, Mr. President, that is 1,200. 1,200. Thank you. And uh, through you, Mr. President, that's, that's um, 11,200 uh, 11, uh, 11, readers uh, potentially for these two papers. Um, could I ask, uh, does anybody know uh, through the president what the readership of the uh, Democratic and Chronicle is? Approximately is fine. Uh, through you, Mr. President, I don't believe I have that information. I can certainly get back to you if you'd like. It's, if I believe correct, good. somewhere around 300,000. Do you agree on that? Uh, I ask that because I feel that if the, we're, we're designating our official newspapers, we do this every year and we go through this question every year. Designating an official newspaper for the uh, purpose of putting in our legal notices, et cetera, I think should be as widely disseminated as possible. Yes, we do have the internet that is available to us and more people do access them than, than used to probably prior to the internet, but still, the fact is that by designating a different paper, we could, uh, in, in all possibility, reach more people and get better um, access 
to the citizens of Monroe County who just by saying let's designate a larger circulation paper or the largest circulation paper in the county. Uh, I don't think this is uh, responsible government to keep it as small as possible. Uh, I understand that there are some financial questions involved that it costs more to get to more people, but it costs less per person to read it if you do the math the way I did. Uh, for this reason, uh, I ask that we do not designate these and that we find some other way of reaching a greater number of citizens of Monroe County. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Barra. Through the President. Um, although I realize I'm the most recent addition to the uh, body, and thank you for the, the rousing welcome and the pin. I was not expecting the pin. Thank you. Um, I realize I'm the, the most, you know, recent addition to this honorable body. I gotta tell you, I have to register with respect, my displeasure at discovering how limited the circulations are of the two official papers that we were proposing to have for our official announcements, legal notices and such. I've often wondered why I've never actually seen these. And that's because I get the DNC, the Democrat and Chronicle, as do my neighbors, as do my constituents. We do not tend to get these other newspapers very often. Um, if we truly want to have an inclusive and informed citizenry, we really need to live up some of the expectations that are set upon us. In particular, if you think about the um, proclamation that occurred today, uh, we were talking about honoring 100 years of service, 100 years of providing intellectual support to our citizens. We should be striving to do the same. I recognize there are constraints, but there are also obligations. So with respect, I've moved to amend referral 373 to strike the daily record and insert the Rochester Democrat in Congress. Thank you. We have a motion and a second on the floor from Legislator Eckel. Okay, um, we're all set. We've got the amendment in front of us. I've gotten a call for a roll call vote. We'll go with a roll call vote. Dr. Quattro. No. Mr. O'Brien. No. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mr. Antelli. No. Mr. Barker. No. Mr. Baruth. Yes. Mr. Beebe. No. Mr. Cassetti. No. Mr. Colby. No. Mr. Daniele is excused. Mrs. Draw. Mrs. Draw? No. Okay, thank you. Mr. Echo? Yes. Mr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Gamina? Mr. Haney? Yes. Mr. Hanna? No. Mr. Hyder? Yes. Mr. Howland? No. Ms. Cayley? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Mr. Monero? Mr. McCann? No. Mr. Racco? No. Mr. Tucciarello? No. Mrs. Valerio? No. Mr. Yolovich? No. President Adair? No. Amendment fails. Back to the main motion. Is there any other discussion at this time? If there's not, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? No. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Dr. Quattro? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Antelli? Yes. Mr. Barker? Yes. Mr. Baruth? No. Mr. Beebe? No. Mr. Cassetti? Yes. Mr. Colby? Yes. 
Mr. Danielli is excused. Mrs. Draw? Mr. Echo? No. Mr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Gamina? Yes. Mr. Haney? No. Mr. Hanna? Yes. Mr. Hyder? Yes. Mr. Howland? Yes. Ms. Cayley? No. Mr. Lee? No. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Mr. Monero? Mr. McCann? Yes. Mr. Racco? Yes. Mr. Tucciarello? Yes. Mrs. Valerio? Mr. Yolovich? Yes. President Adair? Yes. 18-9, referral passes. Okay. On to item number 15. Item number 15, referral 10 dash. Moved by Legislator Barker, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator Cayley. <laughs> Thank you. Um, through the President, um, I wanted to just ask a couple additional questions on the development, the private development in Genesee Valley Park, if I may. Um, and I appreciate having the um, site plans that were with the seeker, which we did not have for the park and, and <clears throat> excuse me, Ed committee. Um, I did vote initially to put this through, but I have a, a couple questions that I would like to ask now. Um, am I understand through the, ch through the President that there will be no additional, um, what did I just say, reviewing by the legislature of the plans as they come out from the Genesee Rowing Club? Through you, Mr. President, um, the review is uh, in this cycle. Um, this is for the uh, um, plan and for the uh, project itself. Um, so there would be no further uh, review. Uh, I would point out that uh, the statement you made about this being a private um, development is incorrect. This is a, um, this will be a public uh, space. Um, it will be gifted to the county. Thank you. Um, yes, I didn't mean to, in, to, through the President, didn't mean to say that it would be a totally private development, but it is being developed by a private entity and not the county. Am I correct? Through you, Mr. President, it's being um, paid for and constructed um, by a private not-for-profit organization um, with um, the county being there all the way along, the county doing the procurement, um, the county um, supervising all of the contracts. So um, it's not exactly your typical private development. Thank you. Um, and then through the president, so I'm to understand that prevailing wage on the construction and all the procurement will be done by the county? I now called? Through you, Mr. President, um, absolutely correct. Um, the county will be doing all procurement on this. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Rowing Club to make sure that all of those uh, county standards are um, uh, upheld. Thank you. And then I had one additional question, which was re with regards to the parking, uh, the additional parking that will be uh, designed in phase two. Do you have, through the president, do you have a location for that additional 20 spaces? Yes, um, through you, Mr. President, that would be under the 390 uh, um, structure. Um, we cannot uh, build structures under 390, but um, the uh, Department of Transportation is okay with parking under there. Thank you. Uh, that's the end, of, the end of my questions. I would just like to, I will be voting for this. I am conflicted about it because I, I do believe that while many people in this room and others feel that this Frederick Law Olmsted parcel has been um, disqualified for historical value and that there's been much damage done by the overpass of 390. I would like to say that it that it, it's still remaining in its in its whole is still potentially able to have historic designation and even though 390 has gone over and created a great deal of eyesore, so to speak, the, um, the juncture of the Genesee River and the canal 
is one of very few, if not the only one around, and it does have historical value, whether or not we all believe that, um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing there's none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carries. Item number 20. <laughs> Item number 20, referral 10-380, authorizing contract with that. Second. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator Haney. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have one question I'm, that I'm still confused about. The transmittal letter that we received from the county executive says at the beginning of the second paragraph, um, lays out as the rationale for this the beginning of the second paragraph, it says, changes in Medicaid reimbursement formulas for nursing homes have created the opportunity for MCH to benefit financially from billing for physician services historically included in its daily Medicaid rate, end of quote. So that that presumably is the rationale as to why um, <clears throat> we're facing this, this change. The responses that the legislature received today uh, to inquiries made during the committee process, the response uh, that's related to this referral um, says in part, no sec and I quote, no secondary billing for physician services will be required as the medical coinsurance, Medicaid coinsurance piece will continue to be paid to MCH in its daily Medicaid rate. The information we received today indicates there's no change in the way Medicaid will be paying us for the physician services, but the original transmittal states that it's a change in the Medicaid reimbursement formula that's driving this change. So could someone explain to me the apparent contradiction between those two documents? Through you, Mr. President, I'll do my best to explain the, uh, the seemingly discrepancy in the two statements. Uh, we used to have much more included in our Medicaid rate for physician services at MCH. The Department of Health uh, in 2010 adopted a um, uh, rebasing methodology which reduced substantially the component that was included for physician services, creating the opportunity because that now is lower than our cost for us to bill separately and include uh, the additional billing as part of the revenue that we now can capture, which historically we were unable to capture. So a piece of it still is in our rates, but not as much as once was in our rates, and therefore the opportunity is created indeed to uh, bill separately and uh, enhance our reimbursement. I don't know if that addresses but your through question. through you, Mr. President, we're not going to be billing. The, the explanation we received today implies that we're not going to be billing Medicaid for the physician services. Through you, Mr. President, the coinsurance piece, uh, historically considered the 20% piece, is not billed directly. Uh, Medicaid recipients being indigent, uh, Medicaid recognizes that billing would be an exercise of utility to try to collect that individually from folks. So they do incorporate that component still inclusive in the Medicaid daily rate, the 20% is included in the, in the rate. Historically, we were being reversed at 100%. For a Medicaid patient who has no other primary insurance, a strictly Medicaid patient, will, will we be billing Medicaid for their physician services? Through you, Mr. President, for a strictly uh, a resident receiving only Medicaid services, we will not be billing anyone else for their services. That is the minority of folks at MCH, though most are, we have 84% of our companies. Will we be billing Medicaid for their services? Separately, Medicaid will reimburse us for their services. We will not be generating a bill through you, Mr. President, for those services. 
So Medicaid will not be billed for anybody for physician services. Medicaid, through you, Mr. President, Medicaid will reimburse MCH for its portion, either through coinsurance or residents ineligible for other coverage. Medicaid does still reimburse MCH for physician services. But it's part of the daily rate. It, it, is, it remains part of our daily rate. Well, then I don't understand the transmittal, which says that changes in the Medicaid reimbursement system formulas um, for nursing homes have created the opportunity for MCH to benefit from billing for physician services historically included in the daily Medicaid rate. They're still included in the daily Medicaid rate. Through you, Mr. President, it would have been more accurate for that to say changes in Medicaid reimbursement levels as opposed to formulas, but at the end of the day, a formula still is appropriate in that it's uh, reduced substantially from uh, the amount that was in the Medicaid historical or Medicaid rates at MCH. I have to confess, Mr. President, that I'm totally puzzled at this point. I thought health care billing was something I knew a little bit about, and I'm totally confused. The hospital is not going to be billing Medicaid for any physician services as physician services. Through you, Mr. President, depends on how you define billing. We do categorize and in our cost report claim credit for physician services uh, covered by Medicaid for Medicaid recipients at MCH. So in, in a word, uh, we do invoice and collect money for Medicaid recipients. We do not generate a bill in the context of this referral. The bills we're talking about are uh, when an individual sees a physician physician fills out a, a billing form, it then is billed to primary insurance and secondary insurance. Uh, that type of bill is not completed, but we do, do uh, receive reimbursement and, in effect, invoice through a cost report the Medicaid program for physician services covered under Medicaid. Well, through you, Mr. President, will Beth Platt and Associates be sending any billings to, Medi to New York State Medicaid? Through you, Mr. President, uh, no. Well, I, I have to confess, Mr. President, I'm, I'm at a total loss then as to why we're proceeding with, 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 with this. The whole premise laid out in the um, county executive's referral, um, it would appear it doesn't exist. Um, I mean, we, and remember that the Medicaid population is 84% of the people at MCH. Um, I believe, Mr. President, that this requires greater oversight by, by the legislature. Um, I would offer an amendment, Mr. President, to in Section 1, uh, towards the end of Section 1 to strike the words with the option to renewal for three additional one-year terms. Um, I'm willing to let this go forward for, for the base three-year period, but I think there are serious enough questions about this that at the end of the three-year period, it should come back to this legislative body for review rather than just be subject to automatic renewals uh, without legislative o oversight. And I would submit that amendment, Mr. President. I have a motion made by Legislator Heaney, second by Legislator O'Brien. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there's no discussion, we'll move to a roll call vote. Dr. Quattro. Mr. O'Brien, yes. Ms. Andrews, yes. Mr. Antelli, no. Mr. Barker, no. Mr. Baruth, yes. Mr. Beebe, yes. Mr. Cassetti, no. Mr. Colby, no. Mr. Danielli is excused, Mrs. Draw, no. 
Mr. Echol. Yes. Mr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Gamble. Yes. Mr. Gamina. Mm -hmm. Mr. Haney. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hanna. No. Okay. Mr. Hyder. Yes. Mr. Holland. No. Ms. Cayley. Yes. Mr. Lee. Yes. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Mr. Monero. Yes. Mr. McCann. No. Mr. Racco. Mr. Tucciarello, yes. Mrs. Valerio, yes. Mr. Yolovich, no. President Adair. No. 1215 amendment fails. Back to the main motion. I'll call for a roll call vote on that. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Legislator Taney, go ahead. Uh, Mr. President, inasmuch I will be voting no at this point, um, I was willing to go forth for the three-year base period, but since the legislature doesn't feel akin to that, and since it would appear that the base rationale for the change actually doesn't exist, or at least I don't understand how it exists, I cannot in conscience commit the county getting into potentially a sixth year a six year period for this process and I will be voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? I'll move to a roll call vote. Dr. Quattro? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Antelli? Yes. Mr. Barker? Yes. Mr. Baruth? Yes. Mr. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Cassetti? Yes. Mr. Colby? Yes. Mr. Danielli is excused. Mrs. Draw? Yes. Mr. Eckel? Yes. Mr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Yes. Mr. Gamina? Yes. Mr. Haney? Yes. Mr. Hanna? Yes. Mr. Hyder? Yes. Mr. Howland? Yes. Ms. Cayley? No. Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. Lightfoot is excused. Mr. Monero? Mr. McCann? Yes. Mr. Racco? Yes. Mr. Tucciarello? Yes. Mrs. Valerio? Yes. Mr. Yolovich? Yes. President Adair? Yes. 23 to 4, motion passes. Motion passes. On to item number 28. First. I'm going to read it first. Item number 28, referral 10 388, authorized. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, <laughs> second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator Colby. Um, thank you, Mr. President. This time I want to make sure I have some of my facts right that we went over in committee. This project is, through you, Mr. President, this project is a $400,000. Uh, total package project, is that correct? Uh, through the chair, Jason Kennedy, with environmental services, uh, that's correct. The project is valued at $400,000. Uh, through you, Mr. President, to the administration, at best, you're looking at $4,000 a year in uh, savings of electric at that facility, is that correct? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. Um, as we discussed in committee through you, Mr. President, um, the life expectancy of these panels is 10 years, give or take, is the best that the industry can tell us. Is that correct for you, Mr. President? Uh, through the chair, uh, that was an estimate. The uh, panels do have a limited manufacturer warranty of 25 years. I thought it was five years in the committee. Uh, through the chair, the, uh, the system as a whole is uh, manufactured the installation for five years, and uh, the panels have the extended limited warranty. Um, so if I do quick math, $4,000 on $400,000, that's 100 years without using any interest or anything uh, to pay it back. So it's obviously a negative cash flow to this, the state of New York or wherever the money's coming from because there's just no way this system can pay for itself before it's obsolete. Um, 
Also, um, my understanding through looking at the, uh, the, uh, the weather records, uh, Murrow County is one of the cloudiest counties in the United States. And, and uh, so the solar panels may not perform to those standards because of lack of sunlight. This is the, in my opinion, this is the, the classic example of why New York State taxpayers are frustrated with our government at all levels because nobody wants to take responsibility for sound fiscal responsibility in this community. And that's why I would not support this. Also, um, it's also noted that the state of New York is, this money is coming from the power authority, is that correct? For you, Mr. President? Uh, through the chair, that's correct, the New York Power Authority. Yes. Uh, the New York Power Authority has caused this state many jobs because of its high cost of operations and our high cost of electric in this state. And this is another example why uh, our cost of electric is high. Even though this is a very small project in their scheme of big dollars, but the pennies adds up to nickels. And when I grew up, nickels add up to dimes, and dimes add up to quarters, et cetera, et cetera. And someday, somebody has to start standing up and asking for accountability for this type of wasteful spending. Just for some state official to come down here and cut a ribbon and go back to Albany and feel good about themselves. And that's why I would encourage people to vote against this type of wasteful spending because someday we're gonna to have to pay the piper and I feel today is the day. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Monero, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to clarify a couple of things uh, through you um, regarding the potential savings uh, per year. What was that that figure? Uh, through the chair, uh, the system is estimated to uh, generate 40,000 kilowatt hours annually in an approximate uh, 11 cents per kilowatt. Uh, this system would then save approximately $4,400 annually. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Holland. First, I'd like to go on record that I support alternative energy. If this project could show that it would save monies or advance our knowledge of green energy, or reduce our dependence on foreign oil, I would be all for it. Unfortunately, this project does not do any one of these three. Therefore, I'll be voting against this re referral. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing there's not, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. I got one opposed. I don't care. Pardon me? No, there was two that I got. Okay. We all set? Okay. Um, before we move on, I just want to make note that since we did move um, a bulk of the agenda, I want you to know that there are some, there were some changes to the agenda. All the changes that were to the agenda were uh, first and second. So you'll see that. It'll be recorded in the clerk's notes. All right. Mr. President, uh, I, is there I, any unfinished business to come before this body tonight? Mr. President, Seeing that I there's move, no unfinished move, business, Mr. Dr. President, Quattro. That this honorable body stand adjourned until Tuesday, February 1st, 2011 at 6 p.m. So February 1st.